everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney. I'm your Art Sherpa and we are having an adventure today. We are part of the Looking Glass Art Crawl started by Mark Muir over at Art Exploration with Mark. We all know Mark. So hi Mark. Everybody say hi to Mark. He started this up. You guys have been asking for something Alice in Wonderland themed and it was so great to know this was in the works while you were asking for it. I saw John coming at me. I immediately adjusted my mic. <laughs> It's Pavlovian now. I'm like, I've got it. Um, if you, I, okay, so it should be in the iCard. I don't know if anyone's made the list public, the iCard. Or if you look down in the description below are the participants for this. Everybody's done a different character from Through the Looking Glass and Alice in Wonderland. And this is my offering. And here's something that I would like to show you. Oh, that's so bright. I got to tell John that's bright. I, I would like to share with you that this is not in any way watercolor. You could do this with watercolor, but this particular piece is not watercolor. These are it's so bright. Are they, are they, are the, are they, is it too bright see, up there? Look, look at this. Oh my gosh, it is bright. Oh, see, it, it's the watercolor paper. So you have to tilt it down. I'm going to come over and try to adjust that a yeah, little bit Yeah, that is like crazy. So these are new challenges. We haven't done this. So all you need for this is your acrylic paints or watercolor. Um, good watercolor paper. Here's my tip on watercolor paper. I like 140 pound or higher. I personally like cold press. Cold press is bumpy. Hot press is smooth. So I like the cold press. And today's project, just because I want it to be substantial and beautiful and something that you can put in your home, if you'll see this, this is a 16 by 20 watercolor board. You can get this at any craft our art supplies store, it's over in the loose papers and you're looking for watercolor board and it's a beautiful watercolor paper that's been attached to a board and it won't wrinkle on you. But any of your watercolor papers will work with this project. I'm demoing the acrylic paint. Now, some of you might be like, wait, the Sherpa. I thought acrylic paint, if you make it really thin and thin it with water, underbinds. As I'm putting out paint, John's tracking me. Today I'm on the mic checking. is my fabulous husband, John, the Sherpa tracker. <laughs> <laughs> and he figures out where the heck I'm going to go and make sure that you guys can see my every move, which is a special component of our show. Sometimes. Right. So I put out cadmium yellow medium acrylic paint, phthalo blue, quinacridone magenta, and dioxium purple. That's the colors that I did with her. I also have this fabulous tool called Miskit. You guys see the misket? Yeah. Okay, this is a liquid frisket material. Um, I'm not that great with an X-Acto knife. I mean, like, I'm okay, but I could be better. So I like to use liquid, liquid frisket as um, a way to make a resist, something where the paint won't stick. And I'm going to actually have to have John get me some tracing paper and stuff like Because, of course, I've walked over here without two of my supplies again. Because okay. it's what I do when we're live. I forget something. But I don't need it right now, so we're okay. <laughs> Um, the tissue paper and my artist tape. No, 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 no. Tish the, the pad of tissue paper. Nope. Pad of tissue paper. Just a pad. They're over there. In a they're yellow under the pens. That's palette paper. In there, there's tissue. There's. <laughs> I'm going to let him look through our rather extensive collection of uh, paper pads. It's, it's, it's almost. There's it. There it is. Is that it? Is that tracing? Oh, Lord. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you while this is happening. What's basically going to happen is I'm going to show this to you in acrylic, but yes, you can follow along in watercolor. And this silhouette is done by using the liquid frisket, creating your splatter effect, pulling the liquid frisket, and then finishing off the piece. If you were to get this board, then you've got a big, beautiful piece that you can frame from any of the craft stores. Ha ha and tape. Thank you tracing paper. I'm going to also use this to catch my overspray. You could use newspaper or anything. You're going to do a little liquid frisket and then you're going to catch your overspray. I really am kind of taking a little risk experimenting here doing this this way, but I wanted to show you instead of speeding up or doing a time lapse with this, show you every part of the process. So you could do this at home because I've noticed these are really popular on Pinterest and online. There is, of course, in the description besides the list of other people, materials, information, and a traceable, because drawing is not the skill you need to have in art. It's one I'd love you to develop. It's one I'd love you to work on. But if you don't have it right now, you can still do this project. Please enjoy the traceable. I hand drew it. It's my, my version of Alice. So you're welcome to 
sit there and use that for your own pleasure at home. <laughs> Hopefully making that good. I'm in, it's the hat today. It must be too tight. I'm having a moment. I'm going <laughs> to sip some sippy sippy. Well, I was going to say, uh, you this had a lot of compliments on your uh, apron today. I, well, I, this was my Alice apron. This is Mary Englebright, who's mm-hmm. one of my very favorite designers and honestly one of my heroes. Because, mm. you know, M- Mary makes bank. She makes bank like a rock star. Well. She does. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. She's like as successful as Kiss, but nobody's like noticed it. <laughs> yep. Well, I, I, I'm going to say thank you to Jane and Mona who are out there moderating for oh, us today. Thank you. you guys are, I really appreciate it. you. Just you just don't know it. I thank you guys so much, and thank you for everybody else who's showing up. You know, we've got over 140 people in here hanging out with us this morning, and they're just keep coming. And thank That's you guys awesome. so much for coming. Well, really I'm going to put this over here, and John's going to keep sending love to you. One thing we like to do is wishes, but obviously I can't write on the watercolor paper. That would ruin it. But guess what? I can turn it over and we can take a couple. Hey, look, Mark's here too. Hi, Mark. Mark is the host of our fabulous collab. If you click his name, you can go to his channel. I don't know what I'm... What, what? <laughs> okay, so our, I know we had some wishes. I know we had some uh, really good wishes right now. Yeah, we had a bunch of wishes. I, I have one for Tanya who's in the collab. She's feeling a little under the weather, so I'm going to wish her well. Mm-hmm. And a little heart. Okay. And we had a, we let's see here. Uh, we had a wish earlier, and I've, the name didn't get copied down, but it was a wish for blood sugar stabilization so that, uh, so that hands can be steady for painting. And, you know, I would, I would just love to wish everyone who's having trouble with blood sugar and diabetes uh, a little relief. You know, that's a tough thing to struggle with. It is a really tough thing to struggle with. And uh, let's see. I saw I saw a lot of good feedback. People saying that there was there was good uh, success from wishes. I'm scrolling back up. I've been stunt handsing so much. Oh, this morning. it's been a crazy morning. We've it had has. sort of a really and we've had a through the looking glass, fall down the rabbit hole kind of morning. I definitely have read Lewis Carroll's books uh, a bazillion times. It was sort of my Jane Austen as a girl. And um, but I mean, I still read Jane. I just read through the looking glass maybe a little more. And w- let's see, so there's going to be some. We mean what wish, you say and for, say what you mean jokes. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? So we wanted a, a wish for uh, people struggling with anxiety and depression. Oh, I yeah, I want to send a wish out there of well-being. Happiness to my community. All right. You got one more, John? Yep. I, I, we have, a, we have a, re- a wish for a good PET scan. Oh, good result on the PET scan. And we also have wishes for our pets. Completely different, but, you know. And pet wishes. And pet wishes. So let's, you know. And John, finally, John has a really special wish that we're going to do until we get there, which is oh, the, the, a year and a day. John is wishing for a year and a day. Mm-hmm. And, and I also want to wish for healthy pregnancies because there's a lot of wishes for pregnancies out there. And oh. we have so many wishes, guys, coming in. Thank you for all of our light keepers who are putting those on your canvases and making sure that they get out there. You know, we try to capture all the ones that we can, but we really, we, we know you guys are you're getting those and putting them in your canvases as well. So thank you so much. I'm putting healthy pregnancy and happy babies. Yeah, we all do this work together. So if we ever miss anything and you'd like to put that energy into the world, you can do that. So now I've sketched her lightly on, and I knew ahead of time, I can't sketch her dark enough for you to see her in the project to come out. Which is why I definitely made a traceable. But basically, as light as you can, you want to get this shape on your canvas. So you'd want to take your traceable out. I have a how to trace or transfer onto your canvas video. You want to get it on there as lightly as you can. And I would recommend something that disappears into the watercolor acrylic paint. It's really acrylic, but the paint. So like a light, light carbon or a light, light watercolor pencil would be my recommendation. Don't let drawing be the thing that stops you. I want to see some Alice's because this project is really cool and really fun. Liquid frisket. Mm -hmm. It's the devil, but also so awesome. So this is going to make it where I can be a hot mess here all around her and retain this beautiful detailing. This is probably an underused material for watercolorists. When I did watercolors, I lived in this because it helps you retain your white. I'm going to open this jar, 
of dangerousness. It is hard on your brushes. You really need to clean them after with soap and water. In fact, I wholly recommend having a little Dawn and a little water in a cup for when you're done with your liquid frisket or to have a brush that's dedicated to liquid frisket. Other liquid frisket tips that I have, I'm going to dip in here lightly and hopefully this is a tinted frisket. What I'm hoping is is that it doesn't run. If it does, I can go down. To, oh, it's running. <laughs> it's a hot mess stuff, and John's going to switch to this camera where we're going to be adjusting color and all kinds of other things there. Yeah, see, I, I adjusted this one so that I could see the line. That So hopefully you can just see that line there. I adjusted the, 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 light, the, the white balance so that that's how it was viewed. That, so that's why some of the cameras are off today is because we're using this paper. I had to adjust each camera so that you could see the line on the paper. Now, things that are freaking me out right now as an artist. Yeah, that camera's freaking out because it's having a hard time seeing the. Is I haven't used liquid frisket on this surface before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to come give that ham camera some help. And this is live. So if for some reason it doesn't sit on top of the paper and it absorbs in and it won't roll up, this will be the first time I'm discovering that. Do you know that, John? And I'm kind of freaking out about that right now. What's well, I'm realizing I haven't tested liquid frisket on artboard. Oh, well, yeah. And it's looking so absorbent, and that is concerning me deeply. That does look really... Absorbent, right? Yeah. That's just tripping me out. So I want everyone to wish that liquid frisket um, lifts from this watercolor paper. Oh, no, I would never use it on canvas. I, I used it on regular watercolor paper. Yeah, well, there's we have open sheets. There's um, big sheets over there. So here's the deal. If it goes awry on us, then we'll have learned a lesson live. And that's almost entertaining. Right? <laughs> And John's like, where is the testing? You're supposed to do product testing. It's okay. We're going to paint this in because we won't know, guys, until we know. Also, we're not, not going to know how long it's going to take to dry here. Yeah. A my, minor panic on my part. I'm like, oh, uh, what are we doing here? It's a little scary. We'll figure it out. We're going to figure it out. So sometimes before a live show, it's good to test. <laughs> Sometimes. Like every time. Sometimes. <laughs> Oops, I put another. Oh, look at that. I'm on the wrong screen, man. I left you guys on the wrong screen. I'm sorry. Where did you leave them? Uh, well, for about 10 seconds, they're staring at the palette there. Just going. Okay. Oh! I, but what you can see what I'm doing is just very carefully painting around. Kind of like varnish. You can't take your liquid frisket. You can't go over it once it's dry. It'll lift up. It's like weird rubber cement mm -hmm. so worried that this is going to lift back up out of this paper <sighs> um if you have done liquid frisket with board <laughs> <laughs> like if say Lindsay were in the room she would be like going oh no sherpa <laughs> i see the train wreck happening as it's going on yeah but we're all here together we're gonna find out we're gonna find out and sometimes art is like that so I guess the lesson will be how to deal when things go really, really wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Liquid frisket cannot be left on your paper more than a day, guys. It will not come off. So this is a project that once you start it, to at least the removal of the frisket, you are committed. Kind of like grout. You know how when you're committed to grout? Yeah. We didn't know that once. It's, it's true. We did and not it know ruined that. our kitchen remodel. <laughs> We were like, let's just go to dinner. It'll be fine. No. No, that's apparently not true at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> John's like, oh, it'll wipe up later. It doesn't wipe up later. It does not. And you'd think we'd know that because we watched a lot of DIY shows. Yeah, that was just bad. But we did end up getting fixed. We did fix it. But it was we learned how to remove grout. <laughs> it's an interesting skill set to have. With acid. So it does seem to be drying, but oh, it's scaring me because it looks like it's soaking in. So we're going to find out. Could you use this on canvas? Mm. 
I think you can. I think you can. So maybe it'll work. Like I have, but I don't know officially if that's a product use. (laughs) (laughs) So what I would say is in my past, I have used this on canvas as a resist and it did its thing. And the thing is, is there's, it like can stick to stuff. So it's like, I'm going to put this in and I need a slightly smaller brush to do this little spot right here. And we're going to find out getting this up is going to be a hoot and a half. Is it? I don't know. I'm going to use a racer. Okay. Do, do, do. If you've been silhouetting with me, the reason I'm doing some of these projects, these splatter project projects, is if you've been silhouetting with me, that's just another really fun thing you can do with that skill. Right? So I'm going to, I think this stuff is pretty heat sensitive, but in the interest of it being a live show, we were going to pre-film this and time lapse it and stuff. And then I'm like, no, no, let's show them the steps. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need different music for this one today. Yeah, we need like, this is really like dangerous stuff here. Let's eat that, drink that, see how it works out. You want to turn me off? So we're going to let cinnamon, cinnamon uh, blow dry that off just a little bit so we can get it, uh, the frisket dried and hopefully this will work. And I'm going to say thank you for all of you guys coming and hanging out today. We've got almost 200 people in the room with us right now. And that is amazing to me. So again, thank you everyone for showing up. I really appreciate seeing all the, all, all the pictures and stuff you post up on Facebook and, uh, share with us and all of your comments and likes and thumbs up we really appreciate that so thanks thanks guys thanks for coming and hanging out and uh you know i've got about you know 55 seconds here left before i completely panic so hopefully cinnamon will get through blow drying all of this before i come apart because you know that's what i do back here is i push buttons and panic when she leaves me alone and and I think that we're getting close to that, you know, just a little too much. All right now. Oh wait, I'm gonna have to think of something. Nope, nope, can't think anything. See, this is just no good. I'm just here, just hanging out, not knowing what to do. Yeah, don't eat paint. All right, so I'm gonna go find some. I'm gonna go find some different music now. Uh, put some something like this. You just left me right as I ran out of music to play. Oh, my goodness. Is that what you're just giving to music and watching me? Okay. Oh, no, I was talking to you. I was talking to him. So Liquid Frisket, fabulous tool. They have them in colorless and um, the kind that has a tint. Don't. The temptation is to shake your frisket to disperse the color. Don't do it. Yeah. Bubbles and frisket don't go together because they'll translate out and then they'll pop. And then it. unless you're intentionally, I have actually intentionally made frisket bubbles. Mm -hmm. To create a texture. You can, like, always break rules to get a result. It's a weird kind of thing that you can do in painting. It's like the fact that watercolor techniques are possible with acrylic. And so we're doing this, I think, like, three times. We're doing a heart tree, tree, and this one. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you these three things. Um, And then maybe we'll go back and visit some watercolor techniques with acrylic. The reason that acrylics um, are not as functional as watercolor the way watercolor works is watercolor lifts and moves. I can kind of push watercolor and lift watercolor and do some management. And the acrylic, once it's done in a glaze and it's down on the paper, it's in the paper. Oh, yeah? Right. So at some point you stop doing washes and then you kind of switch to some gouache techniques. Mm. There is a beautiful reclining figure my mom did as a girl of a woman tanning on the beach. In the sunset reflecting out behind her, I think it's actually influenced my work a lot as an adult, <laughs> um, that she did all in acrylic and people swore that it was watercolor. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a little something that you don't know, but you could do this exact stuff um, with the watercolor. I'm going to put down my um, barrier. Can you put the barrier down? They're being pretty this- silly out here. Huh? They're being pretty silly out here in channel. They need to be silly because the Sherpa's freaking out. Somebody Are you? needs to be silly. All right, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna comply with their requests then. Okay. We're gonna. We're gonna have to make the Sherpa dance. They said, 
They said they need to put, they need to put some dance music on for you. <laughs> it's one of those days. So, so what are you going to do now, Sherpa? <laughs> I'm going to dance. <laughs> I'm going to go to the Roxy. <laughs> So what is it with the tracing paper? What I'm doing is I'm going to, look, it's going to be on me. It's going to be on the cameras. I'm going to have like rainbow pox in about a minute. But I'm going to be splattering my paint. And I, I only want it where I want it. And I don't want it where I don't want it. I'm a control freak. So you're using tracing paper as masking paper. You could use like, I just, what I have that's inexpensive right now, accessible to me. You could use newspaper. Okay. You could use anything that wouldn't stick to the first sketch. So my mild panic to find the, the specific tracing paper could have been handled by generic paper, say. No, but it's like, then it's pricey. This is cheaper. <laughs> I had reasons. And they weren't capricious. No, I just think it's fine. I'm just giving you a hard time. Go ahead. It's okay. So a lot of this is like just trying to fold it and I like be like, oh man, just fit there. So I'm just trying to make sure... And I've got these resists <laughs> where I want them. And we hope they're going to come back off. Huh? We hope they'll come out. Uh, I think the frisket is, actually. I'm looking at this yeah? place I question, but I think it might. Oh, good. good you good. know, I've, I haven't ever had a problem with frisket again, but I just realized I switched to the artboard because they did not have good, reasonable cost art blocks. At all. At all. Anywhere. Anywhere. Or anyone who even knew what an art block was. That was really strange. That John actually asked somebody at a store that will not be named, but let's say it's a lobby where you hobby. <laughs> if you can guess that incredible riddle. and <laughs> It was fine. We don't... T we don't we <laughs> he just couldn't get it. They any did their best to help me. They, and we'll go on. Just nobody... The mystery of the art block was, was there, was born there. <laughs> What's an art block? <laughs> sure, it's a real thing. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so I've created this barrier around her. Mm -hmm. Now here is the fun part. I'm going to get some of the paint that what I have. What paint are you using? I'm going to just use acrylic paint. We, just acrylic. I'm going to get the filbert because that'll load nicely. And a secondary wackety whack brush. <laughs> <laughs> what I like to do. These are holding up on the whacking really well. And I'm going to start out with yellow. So I'm going to get a bunch of water over to my yellow and do what I'm never supposed to do. What's that? Underbind. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. Why right. are you underbinding it? Because I'm using, I'm using this as if it were a watercolor. So I just want the pigment in the water. I don't really want the polymer that much, nor do I need it. And oh. then we're going to whack her. Load up the brush. I'm just using my Simply Simmons acrylic brushes. Again, you can do this with your kids, by the way. You can do this with your friends. If you do the bigger pieces, they will look like fine art pieces. And you can then get the economy frames at the craft stores. Mm -hmm. So I really want some things. So the dots are only going... In theory, <laughs> the theory of the dot is it's only going, if the frisk gets working, <laughs> we'll get a silhouette effect like I did before. Now I'm going to just come over my quinacridone, and I'm going to water that down. I didn't even rinse out all my yellow. I'm going to underbind that, get a watercolor wash effect. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Again, I keep, I keep you're going to be messy. Don't do this where you have your good granite or where your giantly expensive camera is. <laughs> 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 that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, lens cleaning. It is. But you see the paper, just like it was pulling in my frisket. <laughs> is pulling in my paint. 
And so the pigments are coming in. I'm just using heavy body paint. You could use any of the acrylic paints or you could just do this with watercolors. You could do this effect with dollar watercolors. Straight up. Yeah. The only reason why you would not is they would fade out really quickly. So they yeah. only last about a year. Wow, this is so fast. I keep pushing the wrong buttons. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You're fine. I'm just, you know, I'm programmed to normally you go back between two different camera angles and today you're doing different ones. I, it's just a crazy day to day. Just a few of these projects. I just wanted to give you some stuff to do with these skills you're developing. Also, you know, sometimes these pieces, you see them someplace and maybe they're just a little out of the price range that one can afford. Mm. And I, I never, ever encourage copying somebody's artwork and then going and selling it. But, you know, if you love somebody whose painting is $20,000 and you're going to just hang it in your home, that's a go to town. <laughs> Well, that's not really even the remotely a bad thing. No. You know? That's just like learning to paint or something yourself. Yeah. You, just, you know, you're not... You're not going to go out and sell it or claim no. it as your own, so that's fine. Yeah. No, no. Would not go sell it. That's just studies. That's study. Actually, that is... <laughs> stuff is all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it hitting. I was like, what apron can I wear? The apron's got the freckles. The <laughs> My button pushing is not on par today. It's just... How, how is it? I don't know. This is such a crazy project. We've got three of them. If we like the three watercolor techniques with acrylics, I'll show you some more. Like, I'll show you how to, like, do-do them. If you're like, woohoo. And I'm just layering up the colors. And this is the part you might really love. Your kids might really love is the layering up the colors. Yeah. And you're just using the primaries there. Yeah. Yeah. I really, well, primaries and a purple. I'm using Cad Yellow Medium, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone, Magenta, and Dogs Name Purple. Uh, secret, you could use any good color combination. You can make this match any decor. You can apply this with any silhouette. So if you like, you want to do a bunny, you just do the outline of the bunny, you frisk it around it, you splatter it. I'll show you how to finish the piece out so it looks professional. And theoretically, if you could use canvas board, which is about $3 a board, it's not crazy yeah. expensive, you could create very professional looking pieces that you could hang in your home that would give you a lot of pop. Well, uh, our, uh, Mark wanted me to say that he is loving this. Thank you for this collaboration, Mark. So this is really great. Now, do is there any uh, any tricks to keeping the uh, the colors from getting muddied on you? Yeah, don't don't work contrasting colors. So if you've got um, yellow and purple, you want to make sure your yellow stabilized before you start working your purple in, because where your yellow and purple will blend, right? Mm. Or if you were using oranges and greens. You'd have to allow layers to dry. Oh, okay. I'm working things now because I'm using the quinacridone and I'm kind of thinking about where my yellow goes and I saw it dry. I was able to create some layers here. Hopefully I've got enough splatter. I'm kind of just looking at her. Do I have enough splatter is really what I'm looking at. And I'm going to come back in with some blue because there's some areas that I'm like, ah, I want more. And that's what you're looking for. Where do I want more? I want this skirt edge to be stronger. You want just enough of a line where you're like, oh, yeah, I know what I'm looking at. Right. Just enough of a line where you know what you're looking at. But I want that skirt line to really be defined. So this is the art artist part of this journey. Because I'm going to, once I've revealed her and peeled her, we're going to make some splatters that go off this way. And we're going to do a really interesting wash that goes out this way. We're going to finish this little bit with some ink. It's going to look amazing. This, this, I would make like 20 of these and sell them. <laughs> is what I would do. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to have some really funny moment here because I'm going to try to dry this with the hair dryer. All right. And we're going to see how that goes. 
Yeah, <laughs> there goes all this paper. <laughs> all of it, all the paper gone. I'm going to say something really right now that's okay. important. Uh, the you can actually dryer. talk while it's on. Huh? You can talk while it's oh, on. Oh, okay. The hair dryer is going to want to move my paint. It's going to want to blow it directions, and I'm going to want to do that later. Right. But right now, I don't want to do that. I'm going to dab here oh, where? very carefully and wick into my towel. You have the time to allow it to dry on its own. You're just going to try to clean up some of the, the watery parts? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to control some very uncontrollable stuff here. <laughs> wow. Number one place where things go wrong for artists is when we get in a rush. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> so never do this. <laughs> Let it resolve on its own. Sherpa tales of warning. All right, while I've got this drawing here, yeah, I'm going to take a little brush and I'm going to just be sure that I've got certain lines really defined. So I'm going to come along her little face line here uh. and this hairline just to be sure. And I'm using my yellow because it's my lightest color and I'm feeling like there might be an issue with the foot down here. Gotcha. So I'm going to make sure that the foot... I'm worried that this is painting like it's not frisketed, but we'll see. <laughs> you gonna slide that forward a little bit? Yeah. We'll see. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking for this area where I know I'm having some trouble. I'm using just the lightest yellow wash ever to make sure that certain lines and curvatures are considered. Gotcha. You'll hear me say that considered a lot, and basically it's. There's a thing in art where you can tell an artist didn't think about their work enough. Right. And, you, and you're like wishing that they thought about it a little more. And this is one of those places. You have to pull it down just a touch. There you go. Okay. I just want everyone to see what you got going on there. So I'm going to hit a little more with the hair dryer, but I feel like I've added some pigment where I needed it. We're going to see if that's true. We're going to see if the frisket's going to come off. We're going to have a big adventure. Yeah, this is going to be <laughs> crazy. How long? Like, well, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to show them how to make a tree, and we're going to edit it down to that video. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this goes. So while you're doing that, I'll take the that away. I'll find... And we can put that back on because we have nothing to do but watch her dry paint. But literally, we're all here watching paint dry with the Sherpa. I mean, at the end of the day, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. But it is, we're all, all 220 of you guys, I appreciate it. We're, we're watching paint dry with her. And I, I, I feel bad because I should have some jokes or something. And, I mean, like, I, I don't feel bad enough that I'll learn some jokes because I'm pretty embarrassed. But, um... <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to find out Wish I had a support under this, John Like a canvas or something I can see if I can find something Hold on That'd be great 
So I'm using the eraser to start my frisket to lift. Um, that's just what I do. You could use your finger, but I never trust that my, oh yeah. I never trust that my fingers are where I need them to be. And let's hope I dried my paint enough because this is where I'd discover if I did not. You can use your fingers. Okay, so what I'm feeling in this board is it is lifting. Lifting pretty well. It not any harder. So when frisket is easy to lift is on hot press board, it's always a little harder to lift on cold press. But cold press gets you gets you more bang for your buck. It is perceived as a higher value in the art market, interestingly enough. People often don't know that. But you'll find that um, among collectors and craft fairs and stuff, certain things will be more appreciated than other things. And you'll directly see that hot press papers don't always get the same attention that a cold press hand done paper does. Mm. All right, we're about to find out. Well, I frisketed way out. Wow. Uh-oh. Oh, well, that's her hair. That's okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. That's her hair. So I even lost some of the story. I'm killing this eraser. So Mark <laughs> was asking... Uh, we have an arm. We've got takeoff. Whoa. Alice is okay. Wow. Alice is okay. It's some work. I can see why people want to do this in a time lapse usually. <laughs> so. But hopefully this is helpful. Even seeing me, how I'm working it, areas that are resisting. Yeah. Hopefully this is helpful to your process for this project. So Mark was saying you could use rubber cement in a pinch. I have not done that. Huh. That's interesting. So if you do it and it works out, thank Mark. And if you do it and it doesn't work out, go talk to Mark. Oh, no, no. She says, ah, he, I'm sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> that was not Mark saying that you could use that. That was Mark asking if. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. so. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm going to, without talking to the company, say no. <laughs> because I used, uh, in advertising art, you use the rubber cement. I'm using a brush here. This, this nice wash we got to brush off my little crumble so I can see what the heck I've got going on here. Because at some point it gets so messy, you're like, I don't even know what's happening. And you've got to brush it away so you can see areas that you might need to continue to work to rub up. And you can see why you wouldn't want this to set into the paper overnight yeah. for 24 hours. They've got, a, they've got a time limit on this, like so, Cinderella. So... So in, in comment, uh, Rose says that she has used rubber cement, and Kristen says that she's tried rubber cement and it didn't work. Yeah. So this seems like something that you should definitely try out before you put it on some some important work. Yeah, I would I would test it. I would also see if there's a video on it. Yeah. Because somebody may have gone like, well, conditionally, you could use rubber cement in these conditions. Which I would not know what those are. I know how to do a fabulous clean dry mount mm. with rubber cement. Yeah, there's uh, Rose says that there's a particular watercolor tr technique that that uh, that some artists, you know, that watercolor artists use. So All right, perhaps yes. they're aware of that, and it's just not something that we do. It's just not something I have done. It's a big, big paint world. It's a big, big paint world, and. What I, I never want to do is be like, no, because there's so many clever artists out there. And sometimes, even if the rule is one way, they've figured out how to break it. Yep. We break rules all the time here. We break them. They break them. It's okay. The rules are meant to be broken. you got to learn them and then break them. you got to break the rules like an artist, as Picasso said. Of course, he drank a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot. A <laughs> lot. Like a crazy amount. Like if he were alive today, he would have had an endorsement deal with an alcohol company. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he did at the time with a couple of bars. <laughs> yes, he did. Where he traded, he traded his artwork for his tab. Yes, there is a bar in the south of France. And they are very, very, very wealthy. Based on the fact that everybody who came through... 
paid their bar tab. So I'm not happy with this line here. This was a little weird, but it's not the worst ever. I would have liked it to have been a little more refined here, but okay. That's how I painted the first kit, so that's what it is. Mm. Just a little something that I'm seeing. And that happens. Like, you'll notice there's a little spot where you didn't frisk it or you didn't paint the line in a refined way. And so it won't affect or impact the overall piece too much. Mm -hmm. Just as a craftsman and an artist, you may personally have goals. Now, while you're rubbing that out, I was... Well, I'm rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. It's what? 20 minutes of rubbing. Yeah. Something YouTube would say, never, ever do this. For That's what Fast Forward is for. They got it. You're rubbing up the cement. Yep. But, but maybe you're learning something from me. But there's but there's a couple questions that I was going <laughs> to jump on out here. Oh, this last little bit here is just fighting back. So, uh, Andrea was asking an important question about trying to find all of our information. She was saying that she's sometimes missing periscopes or missing updated content. Yeah. And where can she go to find a unified place for that? <sighs> and I was, and what is where, this? Where, John? Where can she go? We're working on that right now. You know, we're we're <sighs> in the middle of, of rebooting our website, and it's where we're going to have a unified calendar and a whole lot of unified tools for you to be able to, to find all that stuff. It's just taking a little longer than we'd expected to get ramped up. We didn't expect to be as bad at WordPress as we are. Yeah. <laughs> But there's a there's a lot of complicated stuff behind it. But we've got a, we've and we got have some, people helping us. We've got some people helping us, so that'll we're be coming smart. along soon. Yeah. So there's been a little over splatter, but we're going to correct for that in the design process. Hopefully, oh, cool. she's looking pretty sharp. Looking I hope everyone's really cool. having sort of an ooh moment, like oh, Alice looks good. Oh yeah, everybody. If is. I can free her legs, we are we're golden. Mm -hmm. I'm getting my see. This is my workout. Yeah. I got this one strong arm. <laughs> <sighs> So we'll, uh... Oh, my hand's cramping. Oh, no. You want me to come over and, and finish that? Oh. <laughs> I think I can. Hold on. Oh, it's okay, babe. you got to follow me with the camera. Oh, my goodness. How, are your hands clean? Yeah, you're, you're better than me. You're always washing. My husband's a fastidious hand washer. Stunt hands. Do you see what I mean? So you can see, if you're new to this, this stuff is... Sh you would really be scared for a minute if you'd never seen this removed. You would really think that you had just ruined a piece of paper badly. That's a uh, support it. Oh, we're getting through it. I guess we could have done two hands on this and really shorten the time. The new Art Sherpa speed effect is stunt hands, where four hands are better than one. We will do it quicker, but only because we have everybody rubbing on the paper. Oh my goodness. You just gotta, it's just a whole thing. And then I like to pass it with an eraser. I don't know, that might have paint. That totally might have paint. <laughs> That's a paint rag. There's no telling what'll happen with that. So I like to take a pass with an eraser, clean the board where I can. I'm gonna tap this out. And then I'm gonna brush it off. We're gonna look at it on the easel and then we're okay. gonna do our next part. Alice exists. Here we go on the easel, babe. Oh, there you go. So do you see her? I was just her? reading up on the chat. Yeah. So hopefully, I don't know if you guys can see her. She's a beautiful piece. She's uh, really rainbow colored, which I like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to splatter a little bit off her dress this way. Right? Without mm -hmm. a resist. And blow a little bit of paint. Now, is that it, it, is Miss Alice there have a sippy sippy? She has a drink me bottle, which we're going to, if you'll notice on this one, hopefully I can uh, oh, there you are. see that. We're going to be doing that little ink work right ah. there. I'm going to, I'm going to, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> Some working out technique. The there. heart. 
is not like this. There's no frisket in the heart. You come back for the heart tree and the other tree is just splatter and paint. It's just, <laughs> well, this is why these pieces get big bucks. These, these pieces go for hundreds to thousands that stuff of dollars. Is sticky. My fingers hurt from trying to rub it yeah. off. Yeah, you'll pay for a piece like this at a craft fair done correctly and framed. But all I'm saying is $3 for the paper, whatever paint you want to use, $15 or so or less even at Hobby Lobby or Michael's on a sale for the, you know how they have the frame, the glass, and the mat? Mm -hmm. Because this is a 16 by 20 board, you can go put that, just pop it yourself in any frame like a photo. You just want to make sure that there's air between the paper and the glass, and that's why you want a frame with a mat included. Yeah. Super easy. You put it up, people are like, wow, where did you get that? I love that piece. Mm -hmm. I'm a lady. I'm winded, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I can, my fingers are sore. I was like, you know, I, I, I can totally understand why. There's a lot. It's hard That's to lot, that right? stuff off. Let's it's take like, her back to the board. It like Goodness gracious. down. Goodness gracious. Alice is working me out. So. 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 Well, now so what are we going to do? I want to take a little bit of splatter here, and I want to take a little bit of um, blowing, and I will borrow this straw, because, of course, again, I forgot to bring a straw. Can, we get can you, you grab me a straw? Yeah, I can get you a straw. So yeah. sorry, guys. The heart, I will have all the tools I need. It's going to be like a short project, too, on Tuesday. Super easy. On this $3 board again, nice big heart tree, splatter, it'll be good. This is, you know, a little more work, but when we get her finished, she's going to be amazing. She's going to straw. Very important tool in all of my fine art is the straw. Okay. What? Don't, yeah, I'm so still... I'm making sure I've got some little bound up paint here. And I'm going to load up a little pool of this right here. Little pool. See the little pool? John's seen me do this before. He knows what this is all about. Yeah. But if you've never seen this before, this thing is the bomb. Not fun if you have COPD. <laughs> or anything going on that's air related. I know. So uh, you could probably do it gravity as well. I'm just saying I heard that in a, in a workshop once. They were what like, could, uh, not could, a thing I do. What about canned air? Yeah, you could totally use canned air. It doesn't give you the refined little things here, but it does do it. So you get these like crazy tendrils. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to get my whackers back. Take it around here to the rag I don't have. <laughs> I'm having a day, John. <laughs> I'm having a day. And I'm going to directionally tap my splatter. It's okay that some of it's going to get around the paper. We don't mind that. We're just telling a story. Like that somebody spilled paint... And this happened. See, that's the story. Obviously, somebody's sitting here working really hard to create this. And you can let it be around the canvas, these splatters. The splatters around the canvas, it's okay, will um, make up for little mistakes that you might have had in the overspray, interestingly enough. So take advantage of that. All right, so there we go. And then we're almost done with the painting part, and then we'll be inking in a second. I'm going to take the last little bit of my magenta. My wonderful, wonderful little magenta here. And hopefully, I think we can see really well. I'm going to come up along here under her feet. And then as level as I can... I'm going to create a little story out. 
in a wash. So yes, it's acrylic, but look, it does the blending that you see in watercolors. Now I'm going to get into my blue. Look at that bleed up into there. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. I'm going to blend it over here because I'm, gra I'm grounding this piece. What's wonderful is we don't worry about spots and drops like we would have to on another piece. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be as considered about those things in the way that we normally would. But we can... Totally work it out. Yeah. I just want to get a bigger brush here, I think. Pull this out. There we go. Yep. Got a bigger, uh, wide brush oh and I just yeah. pulled it, it out. It blends it right away. Yeah, I'm just going to pull it out. And these are just little things that I'm doing as I'm going. Just pulling that out. Now, is there anything you shouldn't use frisket on? Uh, I'm sure a bunch go to the manufacturer's <laughs> website. <laughs> so my experience with frisket is on paper and canvas, right? Yeah. And somewhat within the manufacturer's recommendation. I'm going to grab this brush because I feel like it's going to pull more water for me. Probably pretty safe to say you don't eat it. Um, I'm going to really, really say don't eat frisket. <laughs> I want this to tie in at the bottom here. So I'm actually going to make some drips into this space. So it feels like it's part of the whole canvas. Oh, neat. Right. How charmed would a little girl be to get this? Oh yeah. All right. Let's let's. Uh, I think it's good to look at right now. I don't think anybody's gonna run on me. That is so cool. So there she is. She's uh, gone into Wonderland. She's about to drop into the world. She's about to do the drink me, eat me. And we'll hold this up close to the up close cam. And just pull that out. So I feel like this is fairly dry. And I'm going to find a decent size micron or a brush. So this is um, a company called Pigma. Here, I'll go like this. There you go. Pigma. And this is the Pigma brush. I like it because it is, has a brush effect. You can do um, a sharp. Also... Let's see how big is this one? You can also do one of this style, which has the sharp nib and might be more forgiving. I'll, I'll demo this one because the brush can be a little bit unforgiving. So I'm going to come back here. Hopefully I've got enough information to remember where my thumb was, right? That was holding this bottle. And I'm going to define my bottle just this element, right? Yeah. I'm going to come down and make sure I'm showing our hand here, holding it. It's a simple, simple thing I'm doing. I've got, not right now, Miss Honey. She's picking up her gel pens. Oh, she's picking up her gel pens. <laughs> Art in my house. <laughs> Serious business. <laughs> <laughs> she 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 had asked permission to sneak over and to I get like, the gel pens. To, to get the gel pens. I was like, yeah, we can we can get the art. All right, so I've got that in there. All right, we've got a nice little design in there. And then I'm gonna define the drink me tag. You'll have to pull that down so they can see it. All right, there drink you go. me tag. That we can watch what you're doing. I'm gonna make a little half circle here, and run a little cord to the neck of my bottle. Tie it off. And drop a couple little strings. All right. And then as neatly as I can. <laughs> in caps. It's crazy that outlining makes it seem super real. Like right? That piece is real, but everything else is sort of surreal. Is a dream. Everything yeah. else is a dream, but the outlining is real. Exactly. And it's those kinds of things that you do in art 
that really, I think, reaches people when they're collecting, when they're engaging in the gallery, is when you stop and share a little secret with yourself or the viewer or whoever's with your art, it really does affect and touch. So let me pull this up so you can see that up close. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a little tour. I don't wanna oh. say it, I know there's a lot of questions that have been coming up here that I've not been able to get to this okay, time. Okay, well, we'll do a Q&A oh, before. No, no. Yeah, it's just been because I've been switching back and forth. So I, that luckily the community's gotten a lot of them, but I have to apologize today that you know it's been a little slower. Look at that little thing around her wow, feet. I Isn't like that how charming? That's together, yeah. Isn't she charming? She's just a delight, a little girl about to have an adventure. So there she is. Now imagine her framed, matted and framed and in your home. Oh, and you could sign it. Oh, of course. Yeah. You, you should sign it. Um, you should put some. I will sign it. I'm actually really proud of this one. Put your art Sherpa on there. I'm going to put my art Sherpa on there for sure. I'll just take my micro. I'm going to come over here. See, I am of the school. I like to see signatures on the front because that's, to me, part of the connection to the artist that I have had. So, you know, it's... Uh, I think for this piece, definitely. So I like to see signatures on the work. You know, it doesn't distract from me. So. so I don't know if you've seen these on Pinterest and been excited about them, but thought like, wow, how was that done? That's how that was done. Mm -hmm. You know, you could also use a stencil and lay it on your paper and get a similar effect as a resist. What you don't just want is to be able to control where the splatters go. So you decide. Oh, you I really decide. like this piece, John. I do too. Thank you. I'm like, basically, y'all helped me create a piece of art I wanted anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you love it? You like it? Yeah, honey, honey likes honey's it. Honey's been looking over my shoulder over here. Honey's going, come like in to it? watch me paint. Sometimes that happens. And so you can see how they're a little different every time they're created. Right? Yeah. They're a little different every time that they're created. They'll each time have a little different personality. But that's okay. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you. <laughs> yeah so see I mean like now not that I want to take the mystery of art away when you're observing art on Pinterest or somewhere but now you're like I could totally make that it's not drawing based right so you don't that's not a skill that you have to have and it's just kind of planning and calming down and doing it based and I think all of you have that in you yeah yeah I think anyone could do this project yes. I think I'm gonna show honey how to do this project and she's gonna probably like sail through it like it was nothing mm -hmm. and i think you could too definitely get ready for the frisket to be some work to take up <laughs> yeah and you want it dry but not over dry like don't leave it on there never coming up yep. but now we know the frisket definitely comes off mat board good to know yeah i might do more projects my fingers are sore are we are we fascinated that acrylics do a watercolor technique yeah. I just think a lot of people don't know that they do that. And when you do a watercolor technique and then get back to those acrylic techniques, you can make some incredibly emotional, crazy pieces. I might even be able to show you how to, without having to get in all the expensive materials I use in my fine art, show you some of the techniques that I use to get those done. Mm -hmm. It just only gets crazy when you get on canvas because then you got to buy these crazy grounds. No, there's a, is there's a traceable for this, yeah? There's a traceable in for the description. This. In the description, it's in Pinterest. So I try to put my traceables right now. We're gonna have them all on the website eventually, but right now, I try to always get a link to a traceable if we can get one done. And we got one done for her, and she's in the description. The uh, how to transfer trace video is in the big art quest playlist. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, well, how would I get that on there? It's got some tips on how to get that image on there. Um, I'll, I will say transfer paper doesn't come up easily, but I used it on the first one. I have, I have questions too. And it like... wasn't too bad. You can see that I used um, some transfer paper on her to get the line, and so the line stayed, oh, but yeah. it didn't really damage the image in any way. No, no. It kind of adds to that. Yeah. Kind of pencil. So it just looked like a pencil. I used the Martha Stewart uh, transfer paper. Mm-hmm. To, to put my traceable on there. Now, Kristen was asking, uh, would fluid acrylics work as well? Could you use fluid acrylics? Oh, yeah, like crazy. 
Yeah, that'd be just yeah, fine. That would be beautiful. You know, you got it. You're committed. So what you're going to get with fluid acrylics is you're going to get a shinier finish when it dries. It's going to be jammier. It won't. It will look like watercolor, but look like watercolor. I think that you do gum arabic in, and um, and you will have to wait for it to dry. Gotcha. A little bit longer, but I'm only. I was only in a rush because we were doing a video. Mm. <laughs> Going, oh my gosh, because <laughs> I could have made like a five minute video about this, but I think seeing all the processes is grounding and solidifying and helpful for the like because I actually want you guys to make it. Yeah. And you can do this on any size paper, like the the traceable just straight out of your printer does the 9 by 12 paper that we all have for our big quest books. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, varnish. Mm -hmm. Would you varnish this? No. No? No more than I would varnish any watercolor. Because hmm. I really underbound it. I, it's now a wash. It's now just pigment in water. And it's got the little bit of this polymer in there. But no, you would treat it exactly like you would a watercolor. Can you varnish it? I mean, you can anything. <laughs> It would just have a... Uh, Weird, shiny finish, yeah. So, so pro <laughs> but, but you could. But so when it comes to framing this, though, you want it to be I would spaced? put it under glass. Yeah, and I would have it spaced by a mat. Yeah, right. You know, and if you want to give it to your grandkids, make it an acid-free archival mat. Now, you can go to, like, any of the big box art stores and find inexpensive frames and standard sizes. In 16 by 20. You can go to a resale shop. And find 16. Just take your measurement out. It will work in any 16 by 20 frame. So a lot of times we're like, why do you do 16 by 20? I do standard sizes, um, whether it's 9 by 10 or 11 by 14 or whatever we're doing, so that when if you guys decide to frame a piece, it is not expensive. Because it's only when you go to a custom framer that things get crazy. Hmm. When you're paying per inch. We have a we have a frame in here that's I don't even want it, it's like crazy how much it, uh, it was a gift to me from um, an old boss of mine but it, it was like hundreds of dollars many hundreds many many hundreds of dollars an inch mm -hmm. an inch yeah it's real pretty frame beautiful frame <laughs> beautiful frame but dude yeah look at the paint i have i was gonna like take um, a <laughs> shot for like later because it's having a really good hair day but i'm thinking no i can't <laughs> i got little dots i got the color pox that's what live happens Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. Thank you. We'll see you Saturday. I know it's not up, but I'm going to paint the colorful cow, and we're going to do a colorful cow on Saturday. Yeah. We love that you guys come and join us. We really love you guys. Thank you for sharing everything. And come back for the heart. Yeah. Because that's not even going to need any liquid frisket. No. Mm -mm. That's just, you just you just uh, uh, copy your paper, any cheap paper. You're just, just going to paint. Mm-hmm. Should be fine. And forget your fears. Yeah. And forget your fears. We love you guys. Love you. We'll See you guys later. really soon. Bye-bye. Oh, we did.